And it's good to have you with us tonight and uh, joining those who are here to study the things of the universe. You know what? Interesting, but one of the things that I read recently was that the word university actually came to be because it was supposed to be a place where people learned universal wisdom. And uh, that's why the word university, see? And all of that changed with the dawning of the great scientific aspects of intellectualism. And so then universities no longer became a place necessarily for wisdom other than, you know, intellectualism. Pisces, the fishes. And you have that. You have it right here. Your Pisces, the fishes. And so if you hold it up, you see two fish. And one fish is swimming out to the right, and the other fish is swimming up to the top, and both of them are held by a band. I don't know something you can... Hey, Joan, could you hold yours up maybe? You don't have to stand up. You can just hold it. I think Elliot could look over your shoulder and see it. That's great. Those are the, the fishes, and you see the two fishes. And there are three decons, which are the 30 degrees of uh, Pisces. And you'll see the first decon is the band. That's the band that's holding the two fish in bondage. You see that? The second, if you'll open your page, is Andromeda, the chained woman. That's something. And the third is Cephas, or Cephas, the king. And that's the, that is the three decons of the constellation Pisces. Now, if you look at that picture, you'll see that the fish's tails are tied together, and they're tied together by another constellation called the band. See? Let me show you something. This here, if you were to use your cosmic clock, and I know this is, this is very, very confusing to a lot of people who get into astrology or astronomical science or whatever you want to call it, because here we're talking about Pisces being the sixth sign, we're talking about Aquarius being the seventh sign, and in actuality, Pisces is the twelfth sign, astrologically Aquarius is the eleventh sign, but you're looking at something that was tapped by the ancients and to move into a spiritual realm that was set apart from what we understand astrologically. And why then does Aquarius become the seventh, or that which would be the crown chakra, the seventh sign, is because of the fact that the ancients counted from a spot which was a spiritual revolution, and where they started from was that which was actually virgin. They started not from Aries, which is number one generally in astrological charts, but they started from the beginning where Jesus started from and where we all start from, Virgo, the Virgin. And actually the, the concept was Virgo to Leo. Virgin consciousness to Christ consciousness. See? Leo is the lion, is Christ consciousness. Virgo is the virgin consciousness. And there, when you understand that, you can understand the cosmic clock, why it starts at Virgo. And then you'll also be, when you understand that, be able to solve the riddle of the Sphinx. That's the riddle of the Sphinx. And if, there, if you look at the Sphinx very closely, you'll see that the face of the Sphinx is a woman. And of course, the body is that of a lion. And what it means is from Virgo to Leo, from virgin consciousness to Christ consciousness. That's the riddle of the Sphinx. That's why it's the face of a woman, the virgin, to that which is the lion, the Christ. And there's no way to get to Leo other than by starting at Virgo. There's no way to get to Christ consciousness unless you start at Virgo or at virgin consciousness. And that's what it is. And that's the riddle of the Sphinx. And that's why... You have your cosmic clock, which is more in tune, I guess would you would say, with biblical precepts or religious or spiritual precepts than the, than the normal astrological chart, and why Aquarius then becomes that seventh sign. There are so many aspects of it of which we understand. For instance, the first six signs now are dead. They are gone. That's the six water pots that Jesus filled and turned into that which would be seven, or the wine of the Spirit. When Jesus turned the water into wine, he filled the six water pots which were empty, and that was at the request of who? Mother. The mother. Mary, in this particular instance, but she represents that was Gaia preparing for the big wedding, which would be now when Uranus returns to take his 
bride, Gaia, back with him. And that's what that's all about. But the riddle of the Sphinx is very interesting. And if you look at the Sphinx next time and get up close to it, you'll see that the face is a face of a woman. And it represents Virgo, the virgin, and Leo, the lion, from virgin consciousness to Christ consciousness. Okay? And when you talk about Christ consciousness, you're not talking necessarily about Jesus. You're talking about yourself. You're talking about Krishna. You're talking about anyone who goes from the point of virgin consciousness to the point of the higher realm, the higher mind, casting that over to the right side, finding that center into Christ consciousness. So here's the closing of the cycle, basically. The lower consciousness, if you look at Pisces again on your chart, the lower consciousness fights to pull down the higher, but the higher, which is looking to the North Pole Star, continues to pull upward to God. We had a great, great look. One of the exciting things that we were able to do uh, while we were in Key West, we had a great look at uh, what some folks called Orion, uh, Orion, uh, the great um, constellation. We had a great look at that, you know. Yes, magnificent. Magnificent. But look at the fish to the left, okay? That represents your higher aspirations, okay? The fish to the left representing your higher aspirations is, is raising itself. It's looking up to the North Pole Star. It's reaching itself upward, see? While the other one is, look, swimming around. Swimming around in the fishbowl, which is the lower, you know, that's what we are, going around in circles, swimming and swimming and swimming and swimming and going nowhere. And that fish, if you look to the left, that fish that's raising itself up, and you look at the Bible, it says, look up for your redemption draweth not. Raise yourself upward. Lift yourself into that higher place. But it's an eternal struggle because those fish are constantly straining. Isn't that interesting how both of them are struggling to get free, yet both of them are tied? Now, do you want to know something? This is really interesting. What are they tied to? Look down in the left corner. You don't have to show this one. I don't even think they'll be able to see it. But if you look down in the left corner of the picture, you'll see that the band is fastened to Cetus, the sea monster of the deep. You see that? The band is attached to Cetus, the sea monster, and he holds tight those which are the fish, that which is wisdom, which is trying to break itself loose. And one of the fish is lifting itself upward. The other fish is swimming around in a circle, trying to go wherever it can. Two fishes, two possibilities. And you have the possibility <coughs> of the one fish of Pisces and lifting yourself upward, or you have the possibility of that other fish to go into the earthly fishbowl and go nowhere. You have to take the bait. That's the problem, see? A lot of us are afraid to take the bait. What did Jesus say? I will make you fishers of men. In other words, I will make you fishers of people. I'll give you the bait. You dangle it out. And they'll either take it or they won't. So you, we may think we're clever. Oh, we're not going to get hooked by this stuff. But we're going to continue to swim. And we're going to swim in a, in, in a lake that's not being fed by any living water. And eventually that lake is going to dry up and we're going to die. Or... We can take the bait, be hooked, and be fished out by the great Pisces or the great watermen. So we go upward to the higher vibration as we look at, at Pisces. And we understand that Jesus Christ, the great waterman, to him was given the job to take on the role of the cosmic fisherman. His symbol was the fish. Everywhere he went. There was that symbol of a fish, that symbol of a fish etched on a wall. Everywhere that Jesus Christ went, put that symbol of a fish because he was, that was, that he was called the fish. I mean, it was, the, it was the great age of Pisces, and that was his job. And he, what, what did he, what's the first thing he did in his ministry? Went down to the sea and went to the fishermen. And they followed him, see, because he was the great fisherman. And you've got to look at all of this astrologically. You've got to look at it all astronomically. You've got to look at the whole Bible in this context of mysticism. You can't look at it. Wait, come on. Are you going to tell me that this guy's going to walk down and say, uh, how much are you making? Well, I've got a fleet of boats. I'm making about three grand a week. Well, come on. I'll make you fishers a man. Okay, I'll put it down and I'll follow you. No, that's not the way things are. What that was simply saying is that no matter what you're doing, you have got to put everything that you own down and leave it 
and follow he who is going to lead you from within to be a fisherman. In this great age, which is closing of Pisces, and now the water flows down of Aquarius. You've got to be willing now to turn around and follow him and be a fisherman. And here's the Piscean age, the sixth age, uh, and the cosmic clock coming to an end, and the forerunner of the great herald of the Sabbath, the Aquarian age. It's the Sabbath. Aquarius is seventh on the cosmic clock. It's the seventh chakra. It's the seventh city of, of, of the book of Revelation. It is all in sevens. Do you know why it's in sevens? Do you know why it's in sevens? Because the ancient astronomers, the ancient astrologers could only see seven constellations. Do you know how many there are? Nine. Does the word, does the number nine ring a bell? Huh? There are nine. Do you know that if they could see those nine, there'd be nine days in the week instead of seven? Oh, yes, they would. And nine is the number of consciousness. Six, six, six equals nine. One, four, four equals nine. All of that stuff we said equals nine. There are nine constellations. The two they couldn't see were Pluto and Uranus. They could only see seven. So that's why you've got seven days in the week. And those seven days of the week are named after the planets. You know, moon day is Monday. Uh, Sunday is Sunday. Uh, Saturday is named after Saturn. And the rest of them are named in Germanic names, but they're named after the planets. But that's an interesting thing to conceive that. If they could see the other two, there'd be nine days in the week. That's right. You'd have to work seven days in the week. You'd have two days off. It's a good thing they couldn't see those other two. Well, these companies, they'd really be calling you up, huh? But he went right to the fishermen. And what did he say in John 21, 6, when he went to the fishermen, and he was talking about the great age of Pisces coming to the end, and the great age of Aquarius coming and being fulfilled? He said, cast your net to the right side, and you'll find fish, fish, fish. Then cast your net to the right side, and you'll find. And they caught 153 fish, and I don't have to tell you that 1.5 plus 3 equals 9. And there are nine constellations. And then, of course, he fed the loaves and the fishes. He fed the loaves and the fishes, which is the Virgo Pisces dispensation. When you feed the loaves, it means virgin consciousness, because if you look at the virgin, she has the shaft of wheat in her arm. See? That's the loaves. That's virgin consciousness. That means when you consume that which is virgin consciousness and you will let your mind enter into the center, into the present, into the now, and lift yourself above all thoughts, you are consuming the bread. And when you consume the bread and you are virgin consciousness, then you will be filled with the wine. You're fed the bread and wine. If you remember when he fed the bread and wine the first time, there was seven left over. Doesn't look like a very good seven. But they have seven basket fills left over when he fed the 4,000, which means there is divine intervention into the fourfold nature, physical, spiritual, intellectual, and emotional. The second time, there was 12 baskets left over when he fed the 5,000, which means perfection comes into your life when the five senses are totally immersed then into that, which is the bread of the virgin consciousness and the wine of the new life of the higher mind. So here we then have the, the fishermen Jesus Christ preparing for the great seas of Aquarius to pour forth which are happening now. You, I don't know how excited you are, you know, but you should be the most excited people because here you are sitting at the time that all the Christians have prayed for. You've gone to church all of your life. Every time the preacher got up, he said, Jesus is coming again. This is the second coming of Christ and everybody's getting excited about it. And then you didn't know where he was coming, when he's coming, and here he comes! And they don't even know. They don't even know it. Uranus is coming back to claim Gaia. Uranus is coming back to claim his bride. Uranus is going to come back. The great Aquarian age is going to hit it the year 2010. 2010. 2010. 2 plus 1 equals 3. New life, new resurrection. All things new, brand new, and you're right smack in the middle of it. Look up now. Go out and get a telescope. And find Uranus, and watch, moving up to claim its bride. Venus has risen out of the murky mist of the sea, and with the cyclops of the single eye has cast Saturn down, and now 
Uranus, the son of heaven, is going to split the eastern sky, just as the book says, and reclaim its bride, and its bride is us, the earth. That's exciting stuff, and it's happening right now. And that's why all of the upheavals all over the world, all of the changes, all of the old traditions. You see what Saturn is? Saturn is the status quo. Saturn is the status quo, everything the way it is. You know, I got my church and I do what they say, and I go to my job, and I do this and I do that, and I get older, and then if I get a little arthritis, I'll go to the doctor, <laughs> and I shouldn't eat tomatoes because they're nightshade plants. You know, I'm telling you this. And I get a little of this on my stomach. I'll take a little Pepto-Bismol. I shouldn't stay up too late. I'll go to bed, you know, and I'll have my coffee. Uh-huh. I'll clean out the kitty litter, and I have such an exciting time. I'm alive, and this is that, and I don't know from nothing. What is this? And that's it. That's it. That's it. But here we have the unveiling in front of you of all of the things. All of the great things. How long it was ago that they were saying that the Contra rebels were getting the guns and, the, and Reagan was giving the money to the Contras and all of this thing and the rebels are going to fight and uh, this guy was going to fight and overcome this and there, Bush is down there yesterday in Argentina talking, how do you do? Everything is nice. What happened? Where did everybody go? Gorbachev, they're going to do this, they're going to rule the world, they're going to take over, everything is going, now you're selling them ice cream and everything, what? Where is all the communists? Where are they going? They were going to do everything, or they were the bad guys, what happened? All of these things change because that's what Uranus does. But I'm going to tell you something, listen to me very carefully. Uranus changes things with a radical change like lightning, bang! All of a sudden, you start seeing things differently. All of a sudden, things start happening differently, but not only up there, in here, you are going to start feeling differently. You are going to start seeing things differently. You are going to start understanding things differently. All of a sudden, the things that you used to feel were so important aren't going to be so important anymore. The things that you used to say, I've got to do this, you're going to say, I'm not going to do that. All of these things. What am I thinking of? What's going on? Why am I thinking this way? Look up. Look up. I was telling the folks a little earlier, but about the, the waters rising up and flooding over the last few weeks because of the alignment of the planets. If you take a good look at yourself, you're 80% seawater. You're all salt water. You're subjected to it. Don't, don't you feel different? Don't you feel different than you used to? Don't you think differently than you used to? Don't you, don't you, don't you feel something's happening to you? He's coming back. And you can watch him move across and he's swinging in a great arc to his position. Heaven is coming back to be restored, to overwhelm that which is Saturn, and to be rejoined to claim his bride, Gaia. As it is without, so it is within. And there's nothing you can do about it. I told you about being on that plane the other night. The guy said, the landing gear didn't go down. What can I do? I would, the first thing I would say, would you stop, please? I want to get off. What could you do? You can't do anything. You're on the plane. You're on Mother Earth, and Mother Earth is flying through the universe at 40,000 miles an hour, and she has a rendezvous with Uranus. You can't get off. But for God's sakes, I would ask the people that have been preaching this stuff all of their lives, will you realize what's going on? It's happening. It's happening. But you've got to look, and you've got to understand the signs. You've got to look, and you've got to understand the signs. Come on. You've got to understand the signs. And what, did, what does Genesis say? Let me put lights in the firmament. Let me put stars in the sky. And let them be for signs. Huh? Huh? You, you know, if you have a Bible, if you don't, it's all right. Uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 34. I want to show you something. This is him. This is Jesus Christ. The Son of Heaven is Uranus coming back right now to rendezvous in the constellation Aquarius in the year 2010. That's the second coming of Christ. That's the sign. The sign you can see is Uranus. The sign you can see is the man with the pitcher of water. Change to Luke 2. Luke chapter 2. And let's go to verse 30. For here's little baby Jesus in the arms of the preacher Simeon in the temple. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign 
which shall be spoken against. See? And for a sign which shall be spoken against. Go and tell them. Go into the church. Hey, folks, I know a lot of you folks are in Kentucky. Howard, you're in Kentucky. Go into the local churches where you live in Kentucky and tell them that Uranus is entering into Aquarius and this is the sign they've been looking for. And you'll see the Bible fulfilled because it will be spoken against in no uncertain terms. That is a sign. When the Bible says, let the stars be for signs, it means let the stars be for signs. And when it says, this is a sign, and when Jesus says, when you see the man carrying the pitcher of water, that's a star, that's Aquarius. And the sign will be spoken against. And that's a prophecy of the child. So the fish of Pisces that we see rises above the lower water. In the age of Pisces, which is ending now, Jesus takes the role of the figure of Aquarius and, and he, he's setting the prisoners free that are bound by that band, see? The Piscean age is the sixth age. It's the age of preparation. And now that's coming to an end. You're only 19 years from it. You celebrate the 4th of July. That's puts compared to this. Puts. You know what puts is? I don't either, but it sounds good. Puts, that's what that is. But celebrate this one. The 4th of July happened last year. This hasn't happened for 2,600 years. Don't you think we should have a concert or something? Have a party? A picnic? Ethel, get some, get some bottles, some soda, do something. 2,600 years. And after this happens, you've got to wait another 2,600 years. Take a picture at least. Do something. Is this exciting? And you know what? Nobody knows. And if it is, and if it is the second coming of Jesus Christ, as I know it is, wow. We know it. You know exactly when he's coming. You know the year you can get out of birth. You can get, hey, here, come on, set the chime, get everything running. Here he comes. Look up, splitting the eastern sky. Right over your head, just like a comet. And what does he say? The Son of Man will come as lightning from the east to the west. The light. It's all there. It's all there. It's not something that you have to just think about. It's there. Hey, I'm getting, I'm getting into it now. I've been away for two weeks. It's going to be good. This is going to be the most exciting times coming up as I'm starting to get revved up. This is going to be the most exciting times coming up here. You see what I'm saying? Because you know what? We can prove this stuff, Ethel. This is in some ways. You know, we can prove it. Because even when they look at you and say, well, I don't know if I believe that. When they go home inside, they feel it. They're all feeling it. They just don't know what to do. Ellie went up to a new uh, a, a place in the, the, the store, a new age store somewhere, and he was telling them about this. They got so excited. They would send the tapes, and he would want him to come up to help them with meditation because people are feeling, but they don't know what to do. See? It's like me. Like I said, the, the landing gear isn't coming down. I'm feeling something. I don't know what to do. You know, what am I going to do? So I crank it down. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do. So see, that, 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 that band... That decon in Pisces is the positive and negative. You hear of it in called yin and yang. You ever heard of yin and yang? That's what that influence is. Positive, negative, yin and yang. If you look at Psalm 107, verse 14, it's on page 520 of your little Bible. Okay? Psalm 107, verse 14. I hope you're watching on television and are having a good time. And we have a good time, and boy, it's going to get better and better and better. We are on the verge of just the most exciting time to be alive in the, in the world. 107, verse 14. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands asunder. You see it? And that's exactly what that's referring to. It is the bands, the constellation called bands, which controls those two fish of Pisces. And, and, and as I showed you that both of those fish are banded to the sea monster, which is Cetus. Now, let's go to decon number two, and it won't take too long, so don't, don't get too upset. I'm not going to be as long in two and three as I was in one. I know I've kept you folks a long time because you had to sit through my Jones adventures in paradise. Incidentally, we were down at Key West, and there was no Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy didn't show. 
I guess he just doesn't hear that we're coming. I don't know what it is. I want you to look at the second decon, which is Andromeda, the Chained Woman. Okay? That's Andromeda, the Chained Woman. Guess how many stars there are in Andromeda? 63 equals 9. That's right. And there's a reason. And there's a reason that there's nine. There's a reason that there's 63 because that woman, that chained woman, okay, is the human spirit. The woman is always the spirit. It's the human spirit that's in bondage. It goes right along with the Pisces. It goes right along with the fish that are chained, banded to the sea monster. This woman is chained. Your spirit is chained. Set my spirit free. You people sing. When the people get in church, they say, set my spirit free. Then they should take a look at Andromeda because that's exactly what that represents. The human spirit which is chained, the bondage of that which is the lower. Okay? Uh, the bright star in the head of that is called Alphiratz, P-H-I-R-A-T-Z. Do you see that in her head? And that star means broken down. Broken down. I had an experience with that recently, this vacation, because of some things that came against me. And your spirit just collapses, and you really, you feel you're in such a bondage. I said, you know, <coughs> we, we, we were coming back, and remember we were going through the uh, uh, airport to go over to... Well, yeah, at the end of the vacation, we had to go from uh, U.S. Air over to American Airlines and all of this. And as we're going by with our bags, <laughs> hey, you know, just, I got to get my breath and everybody's running. Hurry, the plane. And I'm halfway there with the bags and the guy announces, all people going on American Airlines flight, please. We are boarding now. Wait, wait. Oh, I'm plugging the thing. I mean, I'm going out of breath. But you know, as we went by, we went by uh, an airline called Paradise Island Airlines. And Bahamas, I said, Joan, no need to go any further. Make a left turn here, and we'll fly off to paradise. I don't know what got me into that. But, but, but what I'm saying is your spirit gets to, to such a point of being broken that you don't want anything. You know, your mind is constantly telling you, get out, get away, break away from all of it. You don't want any of it. Say. So, I know what my responsibility is. I know what my duty is. I know what I've started here. And I know what I have to do. But my mind is telling me, go away, break away, run away, get out. Take Joan and Prissy and the dog and, just go and get a bungalow by listening to the water. You know. And you know how long that would last. But, uh, but, I mean, see, that's what your mind, you get broken, your spirit is broken. Look at Isaiah 52. Come on. We're, not, we're almost done, and you've been really great. You've been very patient, because I've, I've been doing a lot of stuff here, and you've been very patient. But look at Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52, and chapter, uh, Isaiah chapter 52, it's on page 614 in your little Bible. Page 614 in the Old Testament, okay? Isaiah 52, and if you look at verse 2, shake thyself from the dust, arise, and sit down. You know what that means? Come out of that which is your lower mind. And sit down means stop, cease, meditate. O Jerusalem means your consciousness. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. O captive daughter of Zion. Take a look at the picture. Read that, read that with me and take a look at the picture. Loose yourself, O captive daughter of Zion. Do you see? When you look at the picture of the, of the constellation and you read the scripture, can you not see? Okay. And I want you to just, to, if you would, pay, turn to page 635 in the Little Bibles. And if you would, the rest of you go to Jeremiah chapter 14. Jeremiah chapter 14. <clears throat> and if you would go to verse 14, verse 17. Therefore thou shalt say this word unto them, Let mine eyes run down with tears night and day, and let them not cease, for the virgin daughter of my people is broken. Ah! What does the star in her head, Alphiritz, mean? Broken down. What does it say? The virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach, with a very grievous blow. See? The star in, in the left foot of, of Andromeda if you can see that, 
is called al amak, A M A K, which means struck down. Struck down. Human spirit is broken. Struck down, chained with bondage, you know, as is the Piscean fish. And do you see that those people who may be suddenly involved or, or, or you're, you're born in this sign, you see what can be a part of your personality and your makeup. How many, I don't know how many of anybody here that is, but you may feel this, this terrible feeling of being chained, of being in bondage, of you can't get free, you can't do what you want to do, you can't say what you want to do, you can't go where you want to, something's holding you down. And here comes Uranus. Here comes the Son of Heaven. And the Son of Heaven, Uranus, his job is to do exactly the opposite of the way you feel, is to set you loose, break you free, and set you running away from all of that which has been holding you in bondage. To overturn all of that which has been breaking you down and chaining you to the wall of, of this world. And let's look quickly at the third deacon, which is Cepheus the king. The Redeemer coming to rule. Now that's not some fat guy with a, you see, look at his, with his turban on. This is you. This is the kingdom within you. Cepheus coming to set your spirit free. We've seen the fish. You had your choice. You can you swim with that fish upward, swimming around at the bottom, uh, with the, which either one you make the choice. And then we see that spirit of yours broken and chained. And now we see here comes Cepheus, the Redeemer. The Greek name of this one who will set the people and the human spirit free. Watch me here. C-E-P-H-E-U-S. Know what it means? The branch. How many times have you seen it in each of the constellations that we studied? And you folks who have watched right along with us, you've seen it in almost every constellation set you free the branch who is it that will set you free who is the branch oh Jesus is the branch no Jesus says ha -ha, I am the vine you are the branch who is it that's going to set you free you 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 the true you that that beautiful you that you've never met deep within in the center where the pendulum stops in that higher place of consciousness in that holy place within you that's what's going to set you free The bright star in the right shoulder of Cepheus means coming quickly, al -Dirum. There's another star there in the center of his abdomen, al firk which means the Redeemer, and al Rai, which is in his left knee, which means he who breaks, he who breaks the bands, he who breaks the bondage, he who breaks the chains that have held you and set you free. And it's coming now. And it's a part of your nature and my nature to become involved in it. So in Pisces, there is the struggle of the fish to break away from that lower sea monster. And that simply means the struggle of your personality and your being to break away from that which holds you in the lower mind. It's the spirit bound in bondage the, uh, of Andromeda. And the king, that which is the higher mind, the throne, the Christ who comes to break the bands to set you free, to break the chains to set your spirit free. We're going to do, in the following week, Aries and Taurus, and then go into Aquarius, and we'll be spending much time with Aquarius. And I asked Joan, too, to lean on her a little bit and her understanding of these things. She'll be able to help you, because what we're going to do is show you individually how this age that is coming upon us will react, and how you will react to it based on, on your personality and your sign. It's going to be very, 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 very interesting. It's going to kind of get away from the, just the generalities and it'll get right down to specifics and how this will involve you. So uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of folks will, I hope, would want to come out and experience that because it's, it's, it's a fact. And these are opportunities that you'll have to open yourselves up to a new realm of divine consciousness. For those of you who 